I'm back out here on the Appalachian Trail and it's getting to be that time of day again I have to start thinking of extra water because I think when I go up here in the trailers not going to be a lot of water resource so I'm going to fill all I have here in this stream right here it comes out of the mountain This looks like a good area right here. It's nice and covered from the wind. I have a level spot. I can set a tent. It's clear for a fire. But this laurel ought to keep the wind off me and the snow from blowing in. This tent snaps together, it's two pieces. When you're going on a rock and stuff like that, it's a real good idea to have these stakes. Tied it around this tree. You gotta make use of what's around you. So that's the fun of this tent. Is ju you just improvise where you're at. Over here's another tree. So I'm gonna show you around camp here. I got everything cleared away because everything's fairly dry. So I made a nice fire ring there, cut some firewood, got the tent all set up to reflect the fire. I can close it later if the snow comes, but there, I, that ought to be pretty warm. I got a lot of pin oak, red oak leaves there, and they're all dry and crispy, so I threw them in there for a bed. So that ought to help out. I'm going to grab some more later, but... That all dry out while I'm cooking. Got lots of room for my bag and equipment and to do things in here. And you're out in the open. This is uh, a very good design. It's like the old school design. I mean, you have a lot of freedom to do what you want. I tied it to the tree, tied it to the tree. This is like the ultimate bushcrafter tent because you don't have to just set it up as a tent, you can make a lean-to out of it. And that's why it's army issue, and I think a lot of people overlook it. But, if you have two tarps here, you can make something with just one tarp. And there I just closed in the bottom a little bit, but it gives you a little bit of opportunity to do what you want. I always keep the matches in that waterproof container. I like to go old school sometimes and just use other methods. But I have real nice dry leaves that are all skeletoned. And they're they're good. You, know, you got dry stuff this time of year, just go around and look at the pitted fold leaves. Catch them on fire. And throw some smaller stuff on top.
give it a little time to work. Give it some air. I just grab some smaller twigs. We got a lot of hardwood here. So that's what we're working with. I'll let that catch a little bit. What I got going on here is heating up water and I got my coffee and I usually just I take a, a clean handkerchief that hasn't been used just for like stuff like this and I'll pour a, a swath of uh, coffee in it about enough for a cup a good hearty cup and then I'll pour it through the coffee so when that water is heating up to boiling point that's the way they do it in South America okay this is how coffee is done just let it seep through them grounds you don't have to just pour it all at once oh you can smell the coffee it's good That's a pretty, pretty full cup right there. Pour, pour a little more in. Right there. Just let it seep through. It's better than the carry. I think we'll need all the water. for that water a little bit here that's good I'm happy with that cup of coffee bottoms up I'll let it cool down smells real good a lot of hot coals but I, I whipped up some molasses bread dough before I came out and shoved it in this thermos so we ought to have a really awesome molasses bread baked here if it's all done right. Now I made sure I oiled the pan ahead of time. This molasses bread recipe, it's in the Foxfire book. It's in your first Foxfire book. So, y'all check it out because it's really good. It has buttermilk, ginger, cinnamon, a cup of molasses. Really awesome. <laughs>